start with why we care about, say, introductions uh, and theses and stuff like that. Because you'll notice that I've split this essay a lecture up into two parts, even though it's an hour. Um, and the first part is all about like the first 150 words. And then the rest of it is about the other 700, you know, 800 of words. Why does an introduction matter so much? Uh, and the reality is, is I've labeled here that teachers can be petty, but realistically, teachers, when they're marking your essays in the HC, the QCE, the VCE, do not have the same time that your classroom teachers have. Uh, they cannot pour over every single essay. Uh, they have to give you a fair mark, understand it, they're trained, they're experts, and get into your essay. An introduction is therefore going to be the clearest indicator to your marker of what band you'll get, and what your place in that band is. I remember my teacher, my extension history teacher doing an exercise with us in the class to demonstrate this. And he pulled up a bunch of past trial papers. It was in preparation for our trials for extension history. And he pulled up a bunch of papers from last year. Um, and he pulled it up, he just wanted us to read the intro and guess the mark. And he, it was a year ago, he didn't remember the essays, but he'd read through it and go, yeah, so ancient history extension is marked out of 25 for the essay and you'd go yeah I think this is a 21 and he'd scroll down to where the mark was and it was a 21 and I think he got every single one except for one accurate just based on that introduction now he obviously during trial spent hours and hours on these papers so it wasn't just basing off the introduction but regardless the introduction is a very clear indicator of what your end mark might be the reason for this is it's going to outline your argument uh, which is going to make up the rest of your essay, right? It's going to give your marker an insight into the sophistication and clarity of your ideas and also your structure, your phrasing, all that kind of stuff. If you write an introduction that's a bit confused, it loops around on itself, a marker's probably going to go, oh, they're not very confident. I don't am not filled with pleasure upon reading this essay. So from the first few moments of your essay, you have to answer that question but make an impact in the mind of your marker. And how you can do that is by ensuring that your thesis and your answer to the question is spot on. So I'm gonna give you a really silly um, way to... Uh... Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna give you a really silly way to break down a question. It's a bit silly because it's an acronym, Stop. Um, and acronyms can often be a bit silly, right? So this is how anytime you see an essay question, you're going to begin deconstructing it. Most people, when they see an essay question, don't immediately have an answer in their head. How you get to that point where you go, yeah, I know what I'm saying, is by methodically breaking down the question to the point where it just becomes second nature to break down that question. So let's jump straight in. The acronym I would use is Kitty. As I said, it's a little bit silly, it's a little bit cute. I'm not a cat person, I'm a dog person. My dog is chilling in the doorway right there. Um, but it is really straightforward. So when you're answering the question or breaking down the question, you go through this method. What are the key words in the question? What is your interpretation of those key words? What topics are you going to discuss that relate to those keywords and your interpretation? What content are you going to bring in to support those topics? And then link it back to the elective. Now, elective is a bit of an odd word here because it's from an extension English context. It effectively, in your mind, replace it with module, unit, whatever you want to do, option, etc. Uh, all the others just sound a bit... I mean, I guess kitto is a bit fun um, for option, but for now, kitty will do elective, right? This is your kind of goal. And I made it nice and rainbow because we're going to break it, break it down in that manner. Um, but this is the methodology, uh, you, the method you want to use the first time you see a question. So let's start. For English, and indeed for most subjects, your keywords are going to look something like this. Your task word, hang on, let me get it. Your task word is your link to your syllabus. I did this in my last lecture and it, apparently I'm a sucker for punishment because I cannot write with a mouse, but you know, we're gonna try our best. That Y looks so nice and then the rest of the word is a mess. The task word, no, that's not what the task word is. That's what the prescribed focus is. 
That's the rubric link. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm having a moment. The task word. Stop. Erase all ink. There we go. The task word is like to what extent? It is your action word. Evaluate. Analyze. Etc. Um, that's your task word. It's still essential to know because how you respond is going to be dependent on the task word. To what extent you're going to have to respond to a great, to a limited extent. Analyze, evaluate at different levels of intensity. Even for a short answer, right, you're going to take into account is it a describe, is it a discuss, what is it? Task word, pretty important, probably the least important of these four though. Your rubric link is your syllabus. Uh, rubric is obviously the English word in terms of the subject of English. Quite often syllabus link, curriculum link, however you want to say it. So bus. Hopefully you guys can have a nice chuckle at me trying to write with a mouse. That's your syllabus. That is where you're going basically when you look at the question, okay, what is this question actually asking me? Like what have I learned to be able to answer this question? Prescribed focus is the funky thing. It's something that's not in the rubric. It's the phrase when they chuck in that it adds to it and you're like, I didn't technically study that. That's the thing that it's gonna trick you basically. It hones your attention in to a specific element of the syllabus that you may not have explicitly learned. You still will have learned it because it's in the syllabus somewhere but it's an, exact, it's an elaboration, an exploration, an extrapolation, however you want to say it. Audience impact is the funky one. This will depend on the subject and also on the, um, on the subject and also on the length of the response. So in an eight marker, you may not discuss audience impact. This is, as I said, the English words for it, but audience impact refers to basically why. What is this question saying is the point. For studies of religion, it would be something like helping adherents to do something, right? It's something about why do people still follow that religion. For history, uh, it's about better understanding. Uh, again, there's no audience in this case, but it is why do we learn this? For English, it is what the impact on the audience is. Uh, for legal studies, it might be what the effect of those laws are. You get the point. So let's start with keywords and I'm giving you this question. It's not an easy question to be clear. Um, it's not an easy question to be clear, so don't stress. It's an extension English question, but the point is, this is how we're gonna draw out what these keywords are. So remember, it was our task word, to what extent, our rubric focus, which is, doesn't really say, right? It's not super clear, so we're gonna move on. It's more probably emotions. Um, a prescribed focus. Again, we're using fear of language, so it's a bit hard, but it's probably gonna be thread our lives together, right? Um, and then we go to the audience, which is, you know, explore. That's audience understanding. In English, um, if you ever hear, you know, what do they explore in different ways? To what extent do the texts, you know, highlight something? Your audience impact is the audience understanding something. Now, you'll notice here that I kind of breezed through that. And I was just like, okay, well, this is clearly like emotions, thread, that, that. There's two reasons for that. One, I've looked at these slides a bunch of times. Two, I feel very comfortable being able to pull out these keywords. You may not. In which case, especially when you see something like this, where you have no clue what the rubric is, that's okay. You probably, in looking at this question and having a critical think, went, went, well, emotion seems pretty important. That thread bit and maybe the seamstress bit seem fairly important. Uh, this is all pretty straightforward, but we've got to what extent. So I should probably take note of that. And you'd be exactly right. That is also the way you can break through. You don't have to follow, like, here is this, here is this, here is this but it is a really good way to look at it. It just allows you to make sure every single bit of the question is being addressed within your thesis, right? If you, um, 
if you don't pay attention to it, you're probably going to miss something in your essay. So if I just saw this and went emotions and then went, okay, it's about emotions. Like I, the text is exploring emotions, hey? I probably would miss the fact that obviously thread is key here. Now, what does that actually mean? Oh, it's figurative and flowery. It's about the importance and blah, blah, blah. But that's not the point. The point is you can sometimes miss something and then not realize the rest of the question. I really, um... Uh, a really good example of this is an ancient history example, which seems a bit silly, but I'll read it anyway. And for those of you that understand ancient history, it'll be helpful. If you don't, don't worry. Um, it's a question that goes something like this. Dis discuss the different tactics of the archaeologists at Pompeii and Herculaneum in the 19th century. Now. It would be tempting, I'll discuss the key contributions of archaeologists. Oh, hell yeah, easy. Uh, you got Maori, you got Fiorelli, you got Zon, you got Oza, whatever. The key part of that question, that was the archaeologists, the impacts, that's the rubric, right? That's the syllabus. The In the 19th century is the prescribed bit. You could ignore that and write a response and it still makes sense, but you're not going to do well because you've missed out on a key aspect of the question. So even before you start thinking about writing an essay, you need to make sure you know what the question is asking and how to interpret that. And that brings us on to the next question. As I said, well, look, I got thread, emotions, to what extent, there we go. We could have had explore as well, um, but different ways, right? So then we move on to interpretation, which is yellow, as you can see, or an orange yellow. This is just a bit of a breakdown. This, your, uh, your interpretation may not look like this and that's totally okay because it's about how you interpret the, what the question is actually saying. So you might see emotions. So in this case, we have empathy, isolation, passion. Uh, that's gonna be derived by what texts I'm talking about in this case, because it's an English essay. Um, but it could be something else. If my emo uh, emotions in my text are about uh, family, or I'm trying to think of the other ones um, that I studied, um, connection, those types of things, I might bring that up instead. As we can see, judgment to what extent? Uh, as uh, I've elaborated here, I've also kind of said, okay, um, a lack of emotion can also be important, right? It doesn't have to be emotion. Now that's, a bit of it's a similar thing like you're still answering the question you're putting a bit of a spin on it though and then finally you've got different we know what different means that's okay in this case i've elaborated a bit more by saying frankenstein heaney and beckett and their authors um well frankenstein is not an author obviously that is the book um okay then we might move on so we've done k and i i is really just thinking further about k really um as you kind of go through the process of K, you will have um, already kind of interpreted it because you might be thinking about to what extent already, as we said, explore, which is kind of that audience impact. And I saw someone ask, what does audience impact mean again? Think of it as being like, what are you meant to get out of whatever task you're doing? Uh, whether it's reading the laws and analyzing them, what do you get out of that? An understanding of how they work, and understanding of how they might change. When reading a text, what does an audience get out of that? An understanding of the complexities of emotion, the fragility of humanity, something like that. Uh, when analyzing religion, your audience impact might be something like about uh, how we, we can understand how religious adherents gain meaning from said religion. So it's about you as an objective observer, what do you get when you put the facts together? So you can almost think of it as in a bit of an order. Task word is kind of number one because it doesn't matter heaps. It does matter, but it isn't going to necessarily make or break your question. Your next one is going to be the rubric. So as we said, that's the syllabus uh, because you need to know what you're answering, right? Your prescribed focus is number three because it gives further detail to number two and gives you a bit more context. It's almost like it's the specific thing you're going to discuss. 
And then audience impact is number four. What do we get out of studying this? Why do we, why are we writing this essay? What is it that the religion wants people to get out of it? The historians want people to get out of it? Why is it worthwhile studying this? It's kind of you saying to uh, Nessa, or I don't know who, what the Victorian equivalent's called, um, or Queensland for that matter, hey, I actually get the point of this. I understand that adherents follow Christianity to get meaning. I understand that we're studying this aspect in history to better understand how uh, politics has intermingled with uh, the rise of the USSR. I'm writing this to better understand why laws about young offenders are maybe not uh, doing what they should be doing, basically. So K and I are nice and straightforward. Then we move on to T and T, topic and content. The topic is straight up just, uh, what am I writing on? Um, what am I writing on? What are my paragraphs, basically? Um, what am I writing on? What are my paragraphs? What is the topic? So it this is again dependent on the subject. So I've also said content is like body paragraphs or arguments, context or arguments. Yeah. Um, hang on. Let me just check one thing. I just want to check my color coordination is. Keep. Just checking my color coordination is correct because I don't want to say the wrong thing. So topic is kind of like you briefly introduce your body paragraphs. Um, it is about talking about, these are my arguments today, it's X, Y, and Z. Um, all the focus of your essay. It's basically that contextual, like here is what I will be discussing today. Content is about expanding on it. So without, um, the Victorian equivalent is called DOSA. Thank you very much, Department of Student something or other. Thank you, I appreciate that. That's a really weird name. Um, unless you're trying to trick me into saying something so you can go like boffa or something. I hope not. I hope you're being nice. Um, effectively, this is the middle part of your introduction, but it, this will be the middle part of your introduction, but it's thinking about how you'll be responding to the question. Again, you're not necessarily writing this down yet. This will be done automatically. I know it seems a bit weird to be going through it in such detail. But effectively, this is what you're thinking in your head. Okay, I've interpreted the question. I'm not talking about emotions. I'm going to pick this quote and this quote. And then we move into elective, uh, which is effectively your summary sentence linking it back to the unit. 